Welcome to r slash I don't work here lady, where we share stories about folks that are mistaken for employees by irate customers. But before the video starts, please make the red subscribe button gray, and let's begin. The first story is… Karen, I want this troglodyte fired and arrested. Hi there, I'm new to reddit. This is my first post so please forgive formatting etc. I recently discovered r slash and set up an account, just so I could share my Karen story. I hope it's okay. The intro is kinda long, but it goes to state of mind and sets up the encounter. This was the very early 90s before the internet or the Karen phenomenon. I live in a small town in a rural county. I worked for a local law enforcement agency during the day and at a large retailer at night, stripping, scrubbing and waxing the floors. It was a ton of hours, but you gotta pay the bills. This afforded my wife the opportunity to work normal hours and be there to take care of the kids. Our sons were 3 and 4 at the time. One night I was particularly tired. Things were pretty much caught up at work and I was wandering around in full zombie mode. My manager told me to go ahead and wrap up my work and clock out at midnight. I usually worked until 4 am. I get home about 20 minutes later to find a strange car in my driveway and a strange man in my wife. I walked in my bedroom right in the middle of some overly passionate kissing. Given my profession and training, they were terrified that I would kill them or worse. I've always prided myself in being able to control even the most dangerous situations by talking people down and avoiding any use of force, no matter how tense things got. I just stood there and ordered him to get out of my house and take that W with him. I was beyond furious, but managed to hang on to the last strand of control that I had. As they ran out of the house, I shouted after her that she could come pick her things up from the yard in a couple of days. Fast forward three days. I am a total wreck. I have not slept and barely eaten and have been walking around borderline in shock. My wife and kids were my entire world and it was all suddenly torn down around me. I called my supervisor at the department and told him everything that happened and asked for a few mental health days. He agreed and gave me the time off. I didn't need to be around the public in that state of mind with a weapon. We have legal insurance at work. It works like medical insurance. You pick a lawyer from a list of providers in their specialty for discounted or even free services. The lawyer I chose was in the next county in the big city. Our meeting did not go well. She advised me that even with what had happened, the court would most likely rule that since she's the mother, she gets the kids and I would have to pay her child support, which is exactly what happened. It was a different time back then. I staggered out of her office feeling like I had been kicked in the gut. I was already in very bad shape and this just pushed it to 11. My mouth was very dry and my throat felt like it would close. I desperately needed something to drink. This was a very posh part of town. Very old homes and very old money. Just down the road from the yacht club and such. There were no convenience stores anywhere to be found. There was, however, a rather high-end grocery store nearby. I really didn't want to be around people, but I was desperate for something to drink. I was dangerously dehydrated, so I went in. This is where our story begins. Cast of characters. CDV equals Corella Deville. NL equals Nice Lady. SM equals Store Manager. PO equals Police Officer. Me equals Tired Wreck of a Man Falling Apart at the Seams. I should start by saying that I was wearing tan khakis and a green polo shirt. The employees of this store wore either black or tan khakis and green polos, with the store logo embroidered on the breast. A slightly different shade of green, but not enough to notice, unless we were standing side by side. I was on the drink aisle staring at the bottles of Gatorade, Powerade, etc., but I wasn't really noticing anything. I was staring straight through the shelves. My mind was a million miles away. I suddenly felt a sharp pain in my left upper arm as someone grabbed me hard and tried to snatch me around. Out of instinct and training, I grabbed the wrist with my right hand, twisted it up and over, put my left hand on the upper arm and slammed them into the support column next to the shelf. I quickly looked around to check my surroundings and noticed five or six customers staring at what was happening. I then looked at my attacker. It was a scrawny old lady. I released her and stepped back. Remember the original 101 Dalmatians movie? She looked very much like Cruella de Vil from that film. Hair that was obviously colored, long fake nails and way too many rings, and a necklace that looked like a string of small Christmas ornaments. Even though she looked to be in her 60s, she must go to aerobics or something because she had some decent muscle tone under her saggy, overly tanned, leathery skin. As she was composing herself, I heard the nice lady behind me ask if I was okay. I turned to look at her and she pointed at my arm. I looked down and saw blood running down my arm and dripping on the floor. When I pulled her hand off of my arm, two of her fake nails must have cut into my skin. It wasn't actually bad, I just bleed very easily. At this point, I hear, Rah! I turned towards CDV just in time to hear, CDV. How dare you, peasant? Yes, she called me a peasant. Do you know who my husband is? Then she reached back to take a swing at me. As she tried to slap me, I simply stepped back at the last second, causing her to miss. She lost her balance and fell forward. She knocked several drink bottles off of the shelf and fell face first into a shelf, causing her lip and nose to bleed. 
About this time, the manager rounded the corner and asked what was going on. Apparently, he saw her try to hit me and fall down. CDV. I want this troglodyte. Gotta love her vocabulary. Fired and arrested. The manager looks at me and tells her that I do not work there. CDV. Bull SH. He ignored me and refused to assist me, then attacked me and tried to kill me. About this time, I saw a local police officer rounding the corner. Apparently, one of the customers had the store call them as soon as this all started. PO must have been very nearby. Excellent response time. CDV, putting on her best victim face. Oh, thank God you're here. I'm Mrs. CDV, and I want this monster arrested. He tried to kill me. Cue the sad puppy dog eyes and crocodile tears. NL, excuse me, officer, that's not what happened at all. She grabbed him and... CDV, stop lying to cover for him, you trollop. CDV spectacular vocabulary again. Me, holding up my department ID for PO to see. I don't work here. I work at my local department. Me turning to SM and pointing up. Do those cameras work? NL. Excuse me, PO. See the blood on his arm? Pointing to the bleeding scratches on my arm. That's where she... CDV. Stop lying for him. My husband is Mr. CDV, and you'll do what I say right now, or I will call him and he will destroy all of you. PO. Ma'am, maybe it's best that we come to SM's office to discuss this. As we all turned to leave, he asked SM to take her to his office while he talked to me for a second. P.O., having apparently dealt with her before. Okay, so what actually happened? I told him and reminded him that it will all be on tape as I pointed back up to the camera mount. N.L. P.O., I can tell you that she was screaming at him for a while and then she attacked him for no reason. I was on the aisle and saw the whole thing. Then she looked at me. Didn't you hear her screaming at you? Me. I'm sorry, I was lost in thought. I didn't notice her until she grabbed me. I also had pretty bad tinnitus from my time in the military, so that could have also contributed to me missing CDV's gentle request for my assistance. P.O. Thank you, ma'am. I'll need your contact info for the report and possible testimony. Turning to me, I'll need your info as well. I gave him one of my department business cards. He advised me to let my department know right away. He also told me that her husband actually is someone very important in the city. He was a retired city commissioner and former CEO of a big insurance agency and that many big city leaders, all the way up to the mayor's office, were basically in his pocket. I went directly to my supervisor's office and told him the whole story. He had me fill out an incident report in all supplemental forms. He said it sounded like a clear case of self-defense, especially if it was all on camera. She'd probably be charged with aggravated battery, since there were injuries. And that was it. Nothing else ever happened. I never heard another thing. I called my uncle who was a longtime officer in that department, and my inspiration for going into law enforcement, and even he couldn't find anything about it. No police report or anything. It was all swept under the rug and forgotten. I guess the moral of the story here is that money talks. Except for three more quick in and out trips to the lawyer's office, I never went to that part of town ever again. The second story is, show some respect. I was witness to a fast and OD I don't work here lady. This just happened and now I'm speed typing on my phone before I gotta get back to work, so please forgive bad spelling or grammar. I was enjoying lunch at a popular fast food outlet. This particular outlet only sells drinks in cups, no cans or bottles. I walked in. It was before the lunch rush, so there was only one person eating. It was a teenage boy, probably 17 or 18, maybe even 20. I'll call him Hero. So I order my lunch, get my food and go sit down. As I passed Hero, he lifted his head and made eye contact. So as per Australian Outback culture, I gave the g'day nod of acknowledgement and got it back in kind. So I'm enjoying greasy fast food when a lady walks in. She looks like Mrs. Trunchbull from Matilda, except three times the size and looked as if she hadn't showered this side of 2010. I kid you not, she was a real piece of work, and once she spoke, I knew she was as ugly on the inside as she was on the outside. Trunchbull. Give me two burgers, extra meat, no lettuce. Two large fries, extra salt, and a large Coke. Real Coke, not that watered-down sugar-free crap you sell. Make sure the chips are effing full, and because I'm not getting lettuce, you better not charge me for extra meat. Service, probably having dealt with her before, reads the order back. Trunchbull. That's what I said. Come on, hurry up. Trunchbull pays, gets her food, and moves to the closest seat she can fit in. She religiously organized the food on the table, opening both burgers, taking lid off cup, tipping her fries onto the burger paper. It was at this point Hero got up, grabbed his tray with his rubbish and drink which was clearly untouched. He was walking towards the bin when it happened. Trunchbull. <clears throat> <clears throat> he stops and looks at her. Hero. Yes? Trunchbull without saying a word clicks and points at her tray. Hero. Sorry ma'am, I don't work here. Trunchbull giving the I'll get you fired look. You're taking that man's rubbish pointing at me, to the bin, so do your bloody job and take my tray. I'm confused, as he didn't take my tray or rubbish. Hero, what? This is my rubbish that I'm taking to the bin because I'm not lazy. Now, if you don't mind, leave me alone. And he goes to turn away. 
Trunchbull picked up her tray and shoved it on top of Hero's tray, knocking over his drink and making a mess. Hero. WTF, lady. This is a new shirt and you spilled my drink. Trunchbull. Well, you deserved it. Regardless if you're a lazy employee or a bee child, you should respect your elders and take my tray. Hero dripping wet. Well, as I don't work here, I must be a bee child. As a bee, I got no problem telling a cow that respect is earned and not given. The only respect you're getting is the respect you've shown me. With that, he threw both trays towards her, knocking her drink across the table, soaking her burgers and fries before spilling onto her lap. She screeched. Management runs over to assess the situation. To speed over the encounter, Trunchbull plays the victim and tried to lie, blaming Hero. Hero explained what actually happened. I backed Hero up. Management banned Trunchbull from store, saying this isn't the first time she's antagonized customers. She left on her mobility scooter before police arrived. I got a $20 store credit. Hero got a $50 store credit and an apology from manager. On my way back to the office, I saw Trunchbull standing next to a police car crying. Oh, how good it feels to witness karma. And the last story is, Karen needs a rental car. I own a gift shop in a hotel. This hotel has a car rental agency two doors down. This agency closes at 6 p.m. The time is now 7.10. Karen walks to my door, not through it. She's standing in the corridor and proceeds to ask nicely enough if I knew where a car rental agency is. I told her two doors down, but the guy's left already and that they close at 6. She huffs and goes over there. I presume to bang on the locked door until someone magically appears. She comes back. I have a customer, a hotel guest, who's from out of town in here, learning about our community from me, the now local tour guide. I don't mind him at all. He was fun to talk with and like my insider knowledge. She demands to know where another car rental place is. She still hasn't walked through my door. She barks at us that her company doesn't use the agency they put her in a hotel with. She doesn't like the other two big brand names in town and doesn't know much about number four. I tell her I don't rent cars. I live here, obviously, because I'm working. The guest I'm talking to tells her if she can't or won't use the big name rental agencies, then her best bet would be to Google what's around here. I piped in that I don't believe we have any others than the big four, as we're not an airport city or a tourist destination. She's dumbfounded by his suggestion, saying her company would never pay for an off-brand rental company. He again suggested she just Google it and contact her company to figure out her particular situation. He even tosses out the bright idea that most hotel guests know how to do, which is to just ask the front desk person and as a last resort ask for the yellow pages. He gets frustrated because he ends up literally explaining how to use her phone and how to search Google. She huffs at him and I, saying that we were useless and no help at all. His last words to her were, Who the heck doesn't know how to Google? I'm 60 years old, and I know I can just talk to the Google to get my info. Thank you for watching!